you know, I'm all about finding those needle in a haystack type of knives, you know, you know especially that like high quality, lower price stuff. So today I'm going to get real specific with this list of top 10 $50 knives in D2 steel. And to make things even more interesting, it's going to be one knife per brand. So yeah, that's going to be 10 knives, 10 different brands. <laughs> As usual, links to buy, prices, even the coupon codes will all be listed for you down in the description. If this is your first time here, hey, thanks for stopping by, I'm Jay. Go ahead and subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. All right, let's get going with number 10. I got from Shielden, this is the Empoleon. Now you know how many knife companies will uh, try and come up with a, a theme for their knives. You know, all that does is sort of help them out when they're trying to name each model, cause you know, that's that can be tough. Well, Shielden, their theme happens to be uh, Pokemon. I tend to gravitate towards the wider stuff, but everything else on this knife is just so well done. Seriously, I'm willing to really overlook that. Plus, that drop point blade has such a nice shape to it. The only thing that I would probably change here is going to be that pocket clip because, yeah, you can see that that knife, it's going to cause it to ride kind of kind of shallow in pocket. Now, to me, I don't know what it is, but this knife, it really does feel way more expensive than $50. Sitting at number nine, I got a best tech. This is the Texel. It's gonna be more of a, like a medium sized folder that has one of my all time favorite sheep foot uh, blades on it. For some reason, this one also has like a uh, kind of a shallow carry pocket clip on it, or at least it did because I went ahead and I took that thing off like immediately after it came out of the box. And I went ahead and just replaced it with a, that's a, a CJRB deep carry clip. Yeah. It didn't have to mod it or anything. It just uh, fits. Even though I usually prefer, you know, flipper tabs, I think that this knife, I think it might've been a little bit better with, with thumb studs. So then without that flipper tab, more of that edge could be used, you know, when you're trying to cut, I don't know, like countertop or some sort of, flat surface. Now the action of the Texel is just, it's excellent in both directions. And when I'm trying to, or when I do open it, it is really difficult for me to fail. In fact, I'm not able to, uh, I can't do it. Now, the only other thing that I would probably change on this knife is going to be that sharpening choil. It is just, you know, it's like a hair too small for a finger, but man, that just makes a giant sharpening choil. So it's, you know, either go big or stay home. Number eight, I've got one from SOG, or I know some people call it SOG, but it's a Terminus XR. Now, if you don't mind, we're just going to go ahead and pretend that this is the, the G10 version, you know, with the D2 blade. Now there's two things that I love most about this. Well, first one being that blade shape and the other thing, the three different uh, opening options because you can either use the lock, the thumb studs, or that flipper tab. I mean, come on, it is, it's a, this is just a fidget dream with nice drop shut action. All you got to do, pull back on that XR lock. Look at that. And it, it just closes without even a nudge. This is like one of the very few knives in this price range that is completely ambidextrous. Yeah, even the clip. Now, the only major thing that I would probably change here is going to be, yeah, that flipper tab, because it's got some sharp edges on it that really should have been uh, rounded off, I guess. You know, I could probably just do that myself. Number seven, it's going to be a penguin from QSP. The least expensive knife on this list, and it's going to be closer in like the $30 price range, but I went ahead and uh, used it here because there's also plenty of other versions that do cost like around $50 or, or even over. Now, the denim micarta, man, this stuff really just does feel great in hand. It's kind of soft, fuzzy, and it has really good traction. And it has some of the, this has some of the best action for a knife. That's, that's right on bronze washers. Now, once you've had this uh, this thing for a while and it's, you know, it's all broken in. Oh, man, that action. It just it just gets even better to the point where it almost feels like 
the blades riding on bearings. Number six from Ontario Knife, it's the Rat One. You know, if you're just starting out in this in this hobby, do yourself a favor, go and get one of these. Now, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time on this knife because you all know about it. It just has, it's just got like a no nonsense design with a you know large enough handle that's going to go ahead and accommodate all different kind of hand sizes. Now, this is going to be a great knife for righties and even lefties like myself because it's got the uh, the four position pocket clip. Now, there's three things that I just, I love most about this. First one being, well, the, look at that, that excellent action. And the, yeah, this one's also has a blade that's riding on washers. It's also available, if this is a little too big for you, it's available in a much smaller version. Yeah, you know, the R2-D2. And lastly, the price. I mean, it just helps to make this the perfect everyday user. Number five from Ganzo, it's the Adamante Skyman. Now, they call this one the shadow version because, well, yeah, for obvious reasons. Now, this is going to be one of the very few Ganzos that has a, a frame lock with... It even has, yeah, like an over-travel stop. And on top of that, there's a little uh, glass breaker on the end. This is, it's just such a good looking, like dagger style uh, blade shape with a uh, black DLC finish. And, you know, if you're not, if you're not really feeling this like full black, blacked out look, there's a bunch of other versions out there, you know, without it. And on top of that, they even cost less. Now, just like all of the other Ganzos out there, the action... Oh my God, the action is just, is great. Number four, how about a Kubi? I got the KU 322. You know, it was really tough to just pick one Kubi for this list because, you know, they have a, they have a ton of them, ton of knives out there that are in this price range, even with D2 steel. And I think that this checks off just a lot of boxes because of, well, all that it has. I mean, it's got the multiple opening options, you know, with the flipper or the thumb hole. You've got that nice, It even though it is a little bit small, but there is a forward finger choil. And yes, it does have a two-position deep carry clip. And the action is insanely good. Watch this. Oh my God. I love that. And I just love how easy that this is to uh, to get at that thumb hole. Number three, how about an Elementum from Civivi? All right, truth time here, because when when these first came out, you know, I wasn't really, I wasn't really a fan. But, you know, as time kind of went on and the more I carried it, the, I began to sort of appreciate it more and more. And I recently went ahead and I bought this, uh, the, the upgraded Wii Elementum which buying this kind of did something to me that I wasn't expecting. It, it caused me to appreciate, believe it or not, it caused me to appreciate the uh, Civivi version even more than I already do. And the Hollow Ground Blade, I mean, it seriously slices just as good, if not better, than the upgraded Wii. So if you don't, if you don't already own an Elementum and you're not sure which one to get. I would, I'd start with the, this Civivi because it's budget priced and I think it performs just as well as the fancy version. Number two is going to be a Blade HQ exclusive. This, yeah, it's the big boy. It's the CJRB Feldspar. Now I realize that mine looks a little bit different because I went ahead and I did some blade swapping with other Feldspars that I have. So yours, if you were to buy this, yours is going to come with a stone wash blade. And I specifically bought, specifically bought this one because of those beautiful micarta scales. I just like, I like how they feel in hand and the traction, at least I think is, uh, I think it's better than the G10. And it, if that's not, you know, if that's not really a priority for you, I would honestly just go ahead and stick with the uh, the standard version because it has the exact same blade steel. And on top of that, you'll be saving yourself like 20 bucks. Now, this is obviously not a full list of all the $50 D2 knives out there. So I would love to know what are some of your favorites. Go ahead and list them down in the comments.
All right, you ready to see it? My number one favorite $50 D2 knife. Yep, it's going to be a CRKT. That is the Pilar 3. Those of you that have been hanging around the channel for a while should not at all be surprised about this pick. I mean, never mind, never mind its good looks. I mean, the, the fit and finish alone makes this worth every penny. I mean, if all CRKT knives, man, if they all came from the factory like this, I'm telling you, I would be a fanboy for, I'd be a fanboy for life. I mean, just imagine, just imagine if this was released, okay, this year instead of last, it would probably, and I hate to say it, it would probably have spring assist on it because for some reason, CRKT, they seem to be putting it on every new knife that they're making nowadays. Right about now, there's going to be a video up on the screen that I personally picked out for you to go ahead and watch next. And hey, if you haven't already, go ahead and consider subscribing. All right, that's it. I got to run. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. And I'll see you at the next video. Take care.